Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found the information on last week's show, Corporate Matchmaker, Creating a Robust Boardroom Informative. If you are unable to join us and would like to listen to the show, links can be found on our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. If you'd like to receive notifications on when our podcasts have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. If there are topics you'd find beneficial or questions you have, please feel free to reach out to me at media at abandp.com. Now let's learn a little bit about our guest today. Being brought up in the family hospitality business exposed Rob to sales and the importance of community at an early age. Watching his parents navigate difficult customers and the expectations of people while at the same time run a profitable business ensured that when he moved to full-time sales roles, he had all the tools he needed. Those same tools have enabled him to become very skilled in public presenting, training, as well as giving back to his community through volunteering and raising much needed funds for charities close to his heart. Robert's mantra is just be you. So Robert, welcome to the show. Good morning, Candy. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I always start out with, we're going to get into a lot of you know great topics of this discussion, but before we get into that, I would love for you to share just a little bit more about yourself and how did you even get into sales? Oh, look, they say you can be brought up in sales and that's so true. My parents owned and ran pubs in Australia for the first 24, 25 years of my life. So in those days, you lived in the pub, you lived upstairs. Mm. So you sort of, you you became part of everything. So I think I was five or six and when we started, and of course, we didn't have a lot to do, but I had lots of auntie and uncles and they were the people who uh, worked for mum and dad. And I just got brought up in it. Like anyone running any business, if it's family, you get in there and help. You get in there, you learn. As soon as you can reach, you do jobs. But mm-hmm. I didn't realise actually how much I was learning until long after. And uh, mum had passed away and... Dad had retired and we'd moved out of our businesses and I was in full-time sales roles. And I kept flashing back, if you call it, uh, back to the days of watching my mum give one of the uh, barmaids a raz, as we call it in Australia, for not doing a job or Mm -hmm. dad talking down a guy who was bigger, stronger than him, who had too much to drink and was being very aggressive. And I actually learnt from him the art of the bluff. Mm. And you call their bluff and you get them to leave the premises without putting a finger on them. Nice. So, and, it, and it helped me a lot. And from there, I, uh, I went into liquor wholesaling, as we call it. And I worked for some great Australian companies and also worked for a company that your listeners will know, Guinness. Oh, great. I worked for them for three and a half years. And their culture and the way they carried their business in Australia was amazing. And from there, I moved along and, you know, I had a family and all that type of fun stuff as we do and moved into industrial sales and running sales teams. And so I've, I've, I've been in sales all my life. I've uh, been in a fair few industries. These days, apart from that, I help people improve their sales, businesses improve their sales and their bottom line. And I also uh, teach people the art of giving back. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're part of a community, you need to be part of that community. Yeah. And you need to give without any expectation and because uh, people pick it up if you're just doing it for a bad reason. Right. And it's all right. part of the same thing. It's all part of being in business. It's all part of being in sales. So I have a hoot. I use my uh, skills these days also to raise money for charity. I look after a children's uh, cancer charity that I mm. me and a couple of mates raise a lot of money for. And it's a passion that I do on the side. And uh, I have a pretty good success rate. Uh, people see me, they know they're going to run because they won't get away from me without making a donation. <laughs> but That's it all comes from a good place. Thing, it comes from right? a place of love. Exactly. 
That's great, though. I always love to hear, you know, the backgrounds, because often we don't intend to be in the business that we're in. And you look no. back on your life and you see like how things led you to where you are. So it's always interesting mm. to hear that story. Yeah. So <clears throat> I know we have a lot of questions that we will you know, talk about during this podcast today. Um, yep. And the first question that I actually wanted to talk about was, you know, asking the employers to think about how are they performing? How are their sales doing this year compared to last year? So how often would you recommend that entrepreneurs look at those numbers? Look, I think numbers, you have to monitor all the time, but they can't be the only way you scale or the only way you look at someone. Micromanaging actually is a great way to lose good employees. Hmm. So if you're not in sales and you're all the time going after your employees, how are you? We're down, we're up, we're this, we're that. You know what? Salespeople, they don't mind being asked, but if they're having a bad month or that, Mm -hmm. you can really bounce at them. So I think being transparent, I think uh, at least monthly sharing the figures, sharing everyone's figures, Mm -hmm. the business figures, the the gross figures, that is, uh, how we're tracking. If you do it and you build, I call it a sales team, and that's the reason. It is a team. Right. Right. You can have one employee only selling half of what someone else is, but his gross margin might be double. His customers might be more loyal and not transactional. So right. you have to look at it from, well, you know, if I was sitting in his shoes, what would I like? Mm-hmm. I mean, at the same time, we've got to be accountable. So right. uh, it's, it's, it is a good thing. And if someone is dropping in their figures, rather than saying your figures are bad, we need to get you up or blah, blah, as we call you turn and say, what can we do to help? Is there right. something the business isn't doing? Or what can I do to help you get your figures up? Right. And that works so much better than the cane. Well, and I think too, I did an interview a couple of weeks ago where we were talking with somebody a little mm. bit on this topic, but it was really also talking about planning for your growth and scaling your business yeah. and things too. But they were also saying like, if you're looking at sales and your sales are not where you think they're going to be, It may not be sales is the issue. It may be that you had, you know, a customer service issue or, Mm. you know, a shipping issue or, you know, some other underlying issue. So just looking at the salesperson and expecting that it's their problem may not actually be the case. We call that the sales chain. Mm -hmm. And so many businesses forget and make the, make a big mistake that every person that works in your business and it can be a bookkeeping business is in sales. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they're selling. It means that they're part of the sales chain. And as you Mm -hmm. said, you could have the most gun salesperson out there, but if the lady in accounts is rude, Mm -hmm. if the person answering the phone is grumpy, if the guy who's maybe dispatching the product out of the warehouse gets ignored by the staff, puts it in a dirty box, doesn't Mm -hmm. wrap it properly, all of that can undo all the good work your sales or your product is. Right. Mm-hmm. I think too, I think that's a good thing for people to look at too, is yes, your, your numbers are important, but there's a lot mm-hmm. that make up those numbers. So just really like digging down and determining what are those underlying factors is important. I, I look, I tell everyone at least every three months, if you own a business or run a business, look in the mirror. Mm. And I don't mean look at you, look at the mirror in the business and see what's performing right. and what needs help. Pretend to be a customer. Mm-hmm. I tell you what, right. it, 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 it can save your business. Mm-hmm. Well, and if they want to get that feedback, so maybe they're not quite sure what the customer is thinking about them and they mm. want to reach out and ask for feedback. Mm. How do you think we're doing? You know, should they yeah. like send out a survey? Should they call them? Like, how could they get that information from them? And then what can they do to improve once they get that information if there's something that's not up to par? Look, the first thing I say to everyone is you should, you should set a benchmark in every area. Now, that is where you see yourself as your minimum. And then look at where you'd love to be in 12 months. Mm-hmm. So if, if, I'm, if we've got uh, our wage bills at $1,000 a week, and look, we want it to be only $1,100 a week in 12 months, and I need so many sales to get that. So then you go back and you ask your customers, ask your loyal customers, the guys and girls that have been with you forever. And I tell you what, a lot of people love it if a CEO or a general manager rings them Mm -hmm. and says, look, you you bought a television from our electrical store the other week. 
can you just tell us what your experience was like and where can we can improve? And nine out of 10 times, people will be completely honest with you and mm-hmm. they'll help you. Don't right. be afraid to ask. Right. But not one person. You need to ask three or four because you might get a skewed opinion mm-hmm. of something. And then share right. that feedback with your staff. Then let them comment. Don't tell them what you think. Let your staff comment on the feedback and see if they're defensive or see if they go, oh, yeah, well, we could really improve that. Oh, that was mm-hmm. great. I love that customer that he was so happy. We need to keep right. doing that. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think, too, when you have a cohesive team, you know, they work well together. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to be successful together, right? So I think mm-hmm. even building that culture is important. Oh, look, culture can kill and culture can excel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've worked in businesses for both with a great culture and a shocking culture. Mm-hmm. And I probably learned more out of the businesses in the shocking culture because you learn what not to do. Uh, as I was talking offline and I uh, told you about how I used to work for Guinness in Australia and I still call that as the best job I ever had. It was the hardest I ever worked. But I tell you what, they rewarded their people. They looked after us. And we had a small sales team, but we mm. were growing 100% year on year for three years. Wow. That doesn't happen by chance. Right. So they taught me the value of building a culture, building a way of ensuring that the people that work for you feel valued. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't necessarily come down to a pay packet. That comes mm-hmm. down to people saying thank you, going out for dinners or lunch or a good conference when we used to do conferences. Right. But at the same time, when work's on, they expected you to work. They expected mm-hmm. you to do, we could work six or seven days a week during the peak period. So it is a swings and roundabouts, which is an Australian saying, but it's so true. Uh, so I think anyone, culture, you get your culture right in any business, everything else normally falls in place. And if someone yep. doesn't want to be part of that culture, well, maybe it's time you look for a different business. Right. Well, I think part of the situation may also be there's a lot of times people start businesses that didn't intend to even be business owners. You know, things happen yeah. like even, you know, this last year with you know, people not able to work as much with COVID, they have the opportunity to maybe start a business, but, you know, they may not have a lot of the education or the real world experience on how to run the business, right? So they're, it's like trial by fire, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's so so much fun when that happens. (laughs) Yeah, just trying to learn as you grow, which I guess that's where having that feedback too, whether it's from your employees or your customers really can help you identify yeah. where some of those problems really are. And you can learn from those experiences. Oh, look, you couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. If you're going to start a business, make sure it's something you're passionate about, something you love. You don't mm-hmm. need the skills of bookkeeping and budgeting and ordering and that you can learn, but you can't learn passion. Right. It's something that comes from within. So, yeah, you're going to make a lot of mistakes along the way, but that's the fun part. Mm -hmm. Find yourself a mentor. Mm -hmm. Find yourself someone who's done it or done something similar. And these days there's plenty of people out there to help. There's plenty of YouTube videos. There's plenty of uh, networking events online or in person, depending on where you are based on COVID, that uh, you can tap into. And I tell you what, most successful people, they're running a good business when someone walks up to them and asks them a question if they're truly as good as they are they'll help right and it can only be one question or two questions and that can make the difference and you know have fun just embrace the mistakes embrace the successes celebrate both mm-hmm. and, and just ask just just go for it i say Right. Well, and that's true. I think some people will feel like, oh, someone in my industry won't want to talk to me because I would be competition. And there's enough business out there, really. (laughs) Everybody can serve somebody. And often you might be serving a different client anyway. Right. And so or you have a different aspect of things. So and even if you're exactly the same thing, you know, there's a different kind of customer, maybe that like the brand new business might be serving the small sole proprietor where the someone who's been established for Mm. 20 years is serving the bigger corporation. So most of the time, there's no reason to even be afraid to approach somebody because like you said too, if they're a professional, they're doing well in their business, they see the value of helping other people too, because we are here to help each other too, and not try to push each other down. 
If you go to a shopping mall, are all the uh, ladies' clothing shops next to each other? Mm-hmm. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the K-yards, are they next to each other? Yes, mm-hmm. they are. Are the fast food outlets, your KFC, your Maccas, your, your Burger Kings, are they next to each other? Yes, mm-hmm. they are. And I can tell you what, you can go into two Maccas in America and they're both different, even though yeah. they're both the same. So you know, people complement each other. Businesses mm-hmm. complement each other. So I don't be, it, there's no such thing as competition. The only competition that you are worried about is you. You are your only one holding you back. Get out there and do what you're doing. Do it to the best as you can do. Learn along the way and don't worry about anyone else. And if the guy down the road needs your help because you're good at something and he's not, even if he's more successful, go down and say, can I help you with that? Right. Because it's going to reflect good on you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So if we're going to talk about the sales chain from you know beginning to mm-hmm. end, like what would be the steps from the time a prospect calls until that sale is finalized? Look, that it depends on the business. It depends on what you're doing. Prospecting and calls is a unique beast these days. Uh, the first thing you've got to do before you even make a call or knock on someone's door is know your product. Mm-hmm. Know, what you, know who your perfect customer is. There's no use going and selling puffer jackets to people in California in the middle of <laughs> winter, in the middle of summer. You know, right. It doesn't work. Uh, so I say to people, look, know your customer, know who you're looking for first, know your product. And then you shouldn't sell. I, 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 people say to me, I've got to sell someone. I've got to sell. No, you don't. If you do what you do right, you will sell yourself. Mm-hmm. So you walk around and you look, who would really benefit from my customer? Who would really benefit from my product or service? What problem am I solving? And when you go in and you give someone a call, you knock on a door, you approach somebody, you don't say, I'm here with a great offer today. That doesn't work. Right. You say, look, I'm so-and-so bookkeeping. We're down the road. Oh, we've already got a bookkeeper. Oh, that's good. You know, how long you've been with them? And you you build rapport first. Mm -hmm. You find out if you're going to have a connection. And then you turn around and find through what we call open questions, Mm -hmm. what their issue are, what what is their biggest problem. And it doesn't matter if you don't get the business the first up. You'll get it eventually. Solve a problem, win the sale. Mm -hmm. And you just keep asking questions until you say, you know what? I know you're with so-and-so's bookkeeping down the road. We've got this other product that they don't have. Would you like me to just pop over and show you what it is? No. And, you know, and it could help you. It might not help you. Either way, I'm going to get something out of it and so are you. Mm -hmm. And if you build the value, you solve the problem, the price will never come into it and they will come and buy from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many people who tell me stories about account managers or reps or that who have been calling on them for 12 months. I lost when I was first starting out, my boss came in and we did this big pitch and we didn't get it. And I found out later that it was because the people we were pitching to thought he was being arrogant because... Mm. He got halfway through it and assumed he had the sale. So he dropped his guard Mm. and they didn't like it. They took him as if, you know, well, I've got you now. Right. And what they were, they were Chinese. Now Chinese especially deal on trust Mm -hmm. and unbeknownst to him. And he didn't realize it, he defended them. But I kept calling every month, never asked for a sale, just called in and say, good day, how are you going? I won the account back. He was never allowed mm. back in that business, <laughs> but I want him mm-hmm. back. So. But I think that's a good point that you're bringing up too. It's we talked about culture earlier too, and we were mm. talking about culture in the business, but it's mm. also important to really think about your customer and where they're coming from as well. Oh, look, a hundred percent. And mm-hmm. you are drawn to people who share your beliefs and who you are most uh, relaxed with. It's mm-hmm. like your niche. You can have someone in a real estate office. Everyone sells homes. But one sells to over 50s who are wealthy. One sells to um, 30 to 50-year-olds who are buying their second or third home because they're comfortable with them. One may sell to the Indian community or the Hispanic community. All that is is it's who you're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. And you've, it, it takes a long time, especially now with there's no such thing as borders, really. There's right. every, 
every nationality, every everything in every country now you go to. So you have to be very, very aware of who you're speaking to. Because what we, you and I might say, may be disrespectful in someone else's culture. Right. And you learn that the hard way, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you get a, if you can build rapport with someone from a different culture, you can actually ask them, how could I get extra sales in that community? And if you built that rapport, they'll help you. Mm-hmm. So it comes down to just asking questions and watching. I mean, we were given two eyes and one mouth for a reason. And in sales, it is so true. Look, listen, and then talk after you've done your looking and your listening. Mm-hmm. Yep, and everything, so everything will sort itself out. Right. And if you're a good person, you're coming from a good spot, as I call it. Most people will feel that. And they'll mm-hmm. relax and you'll get the sale. But if you're coming as a used car salesman, a transactional sale, I'm mm-hmm. here to get as much money as I can and I'm never going to talk to you again. People's gut picks up on that too and they won't come back to you. Right. That's very true. So I know earlier too, I was talking about, you know, if you're looking at the salesperson and numbers aren't there, mm-hmm. it may not even be the salesperson. It might be, mm-hmm. you know, something in between, you know, yep. or customer service or something. So who should entrepreneurs or business owners be thinking about are all of those points of contact that, you know, that customer is going to have to interact with? What I do, it's, it's a little bit old fashioned, but what I say is get a couple of friends or get a couple of early employees with you in a room, you either get a big piece of paper or get a big whiteboard and write what your product is mm-hmm. and then write the sales chain. In other words, first contact to last contact. Now last contact isn't the sale. That's the mm-hmm. second last point. Last contact is your follow-up after the mm-hmm. sale. And write every single step along the way. It can be social media to web page, to automated uh, cart for purchasing to delivery, or it could be store sales, or it could be warehousing sales. Mm-hmm. The steps are all the same. It's just the labels along the way. Right. And then see what you're good at, what you're not good at, or what's performing and what's not performing, or find out what's the best website that you can get there that you don't have one yet. Find and Mm -hmm. look at the best based on your budget on what you can afford in each one of those areas, and then follow it through, build it, and then then go to market. That's the best way to do it. And find out someone who's done something similar, who's being very successful, and copy them. Mm -hmm. And then improve on what you've seen. Use yeah. use your best, your biggest competitor, who is your most successful, as your benchmark. See mm-hmm. what they do. Go with it. Still be yourself, but still be your own product. And then take it up another level. Right. And let them begin to chase you. And that can <laughs> be hamburgers. That can be tires. That can be anything. But it's a very simple way of doing it. But I tell you what. It works. Mm-hmm. So if they want to look at their competitors, like you were just saying, look at, you know, a successful competitor and, you know, yeah. kind of do what they're doing. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know all the steps that make up. You just see they sell product A, you know, or a service mm. B. So how can they really determine what their co- their competitors are doing? It's it's not that hard. You, what you do is you pretend to be a customer. And I don't mean mm. to be, you're not, you're not physically pretending. You look at from the outside what they're doing. Mm. You ask people, so you buy hamburgers from me, but you also buy hamburgers from Joe down the road, yeah. You go to him more than you come to me, yeah. So what's his difference? What are they doing that I'm not? Every business has a point of difference. Mm-hmm. Every business has something that's different that makes them unique. Now, I don't mean you copy their unique point. If you can match their service and their quality and then create your own unique point, your own value add, your own way of interacting, I mean, you need to be you. Mm -hmm. So it's not that hard to see what they're doing behind the scenes. And it doesn't have to be one. It can be a different product, but the same sales chain. Someone putting out shoes on a website is no different to someone putting out car parts. Mm. It's a product. It's a consumable. 
But if one can get that turned around in three days and one's taking 10 days. Right. That's you need problem. to go and find out what that three day is doing. Mm -hmm. It's just the process. So if somebody sees that there is an issue, you know, and mm -hmm. there's going to need to be some changes, you know, what mm -hmm. type of, you know, decisions, what type of new processes do they really need to start implementing to improve yep. their sales? Look, it doesn't matter if it's sales or anything, say if any of the chink, what I do is I turn around and say, where would you like to say, okay, sales of uh, lady shoes? Mm -hmm. Where would you like that brand of sales to be in 12 months? And I say, I want to be doing, you know, 10,000 pairs. So in 12 months, you want 10,000 pairs. Yeah. Where are you today? Mm -hmm. We're doing 5,000. Right. So what needs to improve to get to 10,000? They know what needs to improve. It could be marketing for this. So what needs to change to get that improvement? Hmm. Oh, and what will it mean to you? Now, that's what we call the fast five in my business. I, I, give, I do people a, a fast five business review. And yes, there's a lot of questions we go through. That's the very mm -hmm. basic of what we do. Uh, where do we want to be? How are we going to get there? What do we need to change? And what will it mean? And you can do that to every part of your business. And while it's a simple process like that, the fast five, as we call it, if you do that in every part of your business, ask the right questions and go through it. Every time you will get an incremental sale and an incremental improvement. You improve bottom. You don't have to increase sales to improve bottom line. You know that. Mm -hmm. You can be. You can have a process that's absolutely taking money out of your business. Right. So if you you need to find that as well. I mean, I remember I was running a major account and we dropped a million dollars a year mm -hmm. because they got rid of a whole heap of people. But I had to improve under this contract. I had to improve their uh, these cost savings. I had to give them so much cost savings. But my business, who I worked for at the time, I had to improve margin. So I had two bosses. We dropped a million dollars. I gave them a cost saving and I improved our margin mm -hmm. by reviewing our product range, our service, and how we got things in and out and reduced our stock on hand. Right. Yes, it took three or four months. My boss didn't believe me until I gave him the figures on a massive spreadsheet and he just went, I give mm -hmm. up. But, you know, and yeah, it can be done. Right. And well, the most that's important true. thing, I'm sorry. I was going to say that's true. Just really looking at things I've, I've pointed out to customers before too, where you look at just because the top line, you know, looks good, your revenue looks good. You really have to look at all of the expenses that it takes yes. to actually generate that revenue. And are you making more or less in, on the bottom line? And I had a, a client that said they're, you know, they kept just increasing their sales and they're like, why is there no money in the bank? And when I analyzed it for them, I found out that like three years before when they had one third of the revenue, they had three times the profitability, you know? So yes, you're yes. growing, but you're spending a lot of money on that growth and your profitability is very small and it kind of opened his eyes, right? Because they're looking at the top line number. So like I said, well, I look, think it's important to look at it, all of that. You're in bookkeeping, you know, your fixed costs will stay the same, but mm -hmm. it comes to a point with demand and sales that in eventually you you your other costs start to rise in line with your sales. Mm -hmm. I remember speaking to a, a boss of one of the big supermarkets in Australia. Now they're called Woolworths. They're like your Walmart or that, but it's just grocery lines. And they said, we've got to build another supermarket down the road because this one here is too busy. And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean too busy? He said, we know the optimum amount of people we need to get through a supermarket to get the maximum profit. He said, if we go too far over that, I start losing money. Hmm. And people don't realize. So you, you've, as you just said, you've got to look at all your costs. Mm -hmm. And sales isn't just selling. Right. You've got to know your bottom line. You've got to know your costs. You've got to know, well, yeah, okay, I might be able to get that out in three days instead of five. But I need to charge my customer an extra $10 per unit to get that out because it's mm -hmm. increasing my bottom line because I've got to employ an extra person. I've got to pay extra for freight to get it to him in time. Right. So yep. you are 100% on the mark there. Hmm. Well, there's definitely a lot that goes into all of that. <laughs> just, oh, yeah. It's not as simple yeah. as that as you and I know. <laughs> right. 
Right. So I know you said earlier too, you know, that everyone needs to know like the products that they're selling. And again, because yes. there's so many different people that are involved in this whole process, mm. like how do they educate their staff? You know, if you have an admin answering the phone, they might not be thinking that they need to understand all of the parts of, you know, no. the product or whatever, but assuming, you know, that your belief is really everyone should know kind of about all the products and services, yeah. how should they take the time to educate them and how should they go about that process? When I was working in a, uh, a rather large brewery in Australia, we had a very big sales team and they were awesome at launching products, marketing products, and they had product managers. And one year they launched a product without speaking to the sales team or speaking to the ladies who were in the call centre. That product failed. Mm. And when they came back to us, why did it fail? You know, it's all your fault in sales, do and we went, well, you never asked us about the product. Mm -hmm. We would have told you that that's not going to work. So you don't expect the person on the front desk or answering the phone to know all the technical details about the mm -hmm. widget that the back end is selling. But you right. do need them to know that you sell widgets that go in washing machines. Mm -hmm. And we sell the best widgets going around and we give the best service. And I can easily put you through to one of the guys in technical who can answer all your questions. Right. If you bring everyone as a team along on the ride, the best marketing people will tell you, you must include everybody. Mm -hmm. You have, you, you share all the information of what's going on. And I don't mean the technical or the costs, but if you're launching a new product, you need to make sure that everyone in your business knows that we're launching a new product next week and this is what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. And we don't expect you to sell it, but, if you come across anyone who you think may pass it through to sales or ask them what they're looking for. Right. Because then they, once an employee feels part of the service and part of the family, some of them can actually become your best salespeople mm -hmm. that never make a sale. Right. Because they get, they get pride in their business, they get pride in their job. And, you know, they, they can be down at the, the pub, they can be shopping with or a baseball or whatever. And they start talking about, their business or hear someone and they go, you know what, we just launched a really great product. I don't know too much about it, but the guys are raving about it. <laughs> Endorsement, the best form of advertising. You know, it, 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 it just, it just works. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what they probably need to think about too, is every person, you know, is really part of that sales team. Even again, if they're not out there actually selling the product directly to the customer, every yes. person in there is a support team. Oh, look, you, I couldn't agree. It's like when you walk past a uh, shop and the, the shop window is drab and ugly. He, that person could have the most awesome product inside at the best right. price, great value. But if the outside of the building looks terrible or the delivery van has uh, stickers peeling off the side of it mm -hmm. or uh, it can be something as simple as that or when you go in and the, the young girl behind the counter doesn't put her head up from her iPhone. Mm-hmm. You can spend millions of dollars on everything, but if the whole package isn't there, you've wasted your money. Right. Yes, so true. So if a business is looking to grow, you know, mm -hmm. you talked about where are you now, kind of where do you want to be? So they're looking mm -hmm. to grow and they want to make sure that their processes are going to support that growth. How do they mm -hmm. know if their current structure is going to actually support that growth or if they need to make changes? Look, you'll get feedback. Right? The business will creak. Mm. And it's, it's about looking. So you don't go and triple your sales in one month. Mm -hmm. You do it by incremental growth. Right. So sometimes it's a test market. So you, you could have a new product and you went, I wonder if this is going to work or not. So you pick an area, a suburb, you know, a large suburb, uh, and test the product in that area and see what the customers come back with mm -hmm. and then test it again. And then you go, all right, and then and grow. It's like when you build a house, you don't, you put all the foundations down, and then you build on top of them, build on top. You don't build the house and then put the foundations underneath. Right. So I believe it's like poking the bear. You, you poke and see what happens, and you poke mm. and see what happens. <laughs> and you keep poking. And then right. when you go, all right, this is going to work. And then you go, bang. But you, right. don't, you don't do it for months. You, you don't procrastinate because I don't believe in procrastination. Actually, I don't think it actually exists. Mm -hmm. But you you have to set yourself a timeline. You have to set yourself a start time and a finish line. 
and say, right, we're going to test this product over the next three months and see if it works. Mm-hmm. And if in the first month it looks like it's going to bomb, we cut them. We'll, mm. we'll find something else. Or we'll find out from our customers why it didn't work and go and develop a product that will. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to be brutal, cruel to be kind sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's and that's true in sales. Right. It doesn't matter the quality, how good it is. If the customer, and there's no need for the product, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I was going to say. I think sometimes it might be hard for a business to cut that. You know, like you said, if it's not in the first month or something, you're looking at it, it's not doing well. They might be thinking, yeah. well, it just takes a little more time for customers to find out about it or something. Like they might want to justify oh, yeah. why. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, this, you've, you've got to be pragmatic. Mm-hmm. You can, if you've got a really good product and you say to yourself, well, have we advertised it? Have mm-hmm. we promoted it? You've got to break it all, break it down. I mean, I don't mean overthink it, mm-hmm. but you should have a marketing plan before you launch a product. Mm-hmm. What it's going to look like, what we're going to price it at, what the competitors are pricing at, how am I going to advertise it? What's the turn? You write it all down, go through it, and don't launch it until you know you're comfortable in all right. of those things. I mean, you don't order a new hamburger and launch it the next day, but only order the pickles the day before. Right. It's not going to work. <laughs> you know, you, you make the hamburger and you give it to your staff and get them to eat it a few times to make sure that mm-hmm. it doesn't taste like rubbish, that it tastes mm-hmm. as good as you hope it's going to taste. I mean, that's what Maccas do. That's what all the big companies, Apple, the rest of them, uh, Samsung, they all test market. Mm-hmm. You just got to test market for what you think. And it could be in a, an accounting business. The simple way to do that is to ask your customers, will thinking of doing this service, do you think it's something that people will look, would like us to provide? Right. And sit back yeah. and wait. And they <laughs> exactly. may come back and say, no, they don't want that, but they want this. Mm-hmm. And then you pivot. Right. Well, and things like that sometimes happen. I mean, even with this podcast, I mean, about maybe four or five months ago, I actually created just a me actually explaining the employer retention tax credit and the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, and how they're different. And I know mm-hmm. you're in another country, so maybe you don't know all the details too, but it was important for business owners to understand. And so I created that just to help explain it. And someone yeah. commented on the video and said, can you actually show us how to apply for this credit. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. So that was a a video that I ended up creating then. And that one has now been like the most popular video on like the YouTube Mm. channel I have with so many people commenting and a lot of people have been reaching out to my company. And I hadn't necessarily even thought about doing that, but it was feedback from somebody that wasn't even my own customer. They just saw the podcast and said, oh, this would be really helpful if you could do this. And I was like, okay, great. You know, so took that feedback. And, you know, it's, it's definitely been helpful because a lot of people have now been able to apply for those credits. Look, I spoke to a guy who had a paint store and he didn't like, doesn't like social media, doesn't like anything like that. Mm-hmm. And we got him to start a YouTube channel. What do I need that for? And I said, it'll be your best marketing. I can't sell on that. I said, you're not going to be doing selling. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be showing people how to paint properly. 15 minute videos on how to paint properly. Mm-hmm. didn't understand at the start but in the end he started to see all the inquiries and the people ringing in mm-hmm. saying can you show me this or how do I do that or and he became the expert in his area on painting right and guess what he sells all the paint to them mm-hmm. so yeah. it's just it's exactly what you did mm-hmm. well like yeah. I said my passion has been to just educate people too like the reason I have this podcast is mm-hmm to give information to entrepreneurs so they can be successful. That's my goal with this whole thing. So having, you know, that knowing that that's helping someone too, that's what like makes me really happy, (laughs) right? About it. So you know what people Mm -hmm. pick that up Mm -hmm. and uh, people do business with people who do those type of things. Mm -hmm. They don't do business with people who are just transactional, who just take your money and don't want to talk to you after their hour is up because in an hour and one minute, you're not paying for it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's all kudos to you. That's 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 awesome that you've done that. And obviously your customers like you for it. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's why I said I, I'm glad that you're on this episode too, because this is an important topic. You know, sales really drives the success of your business in the long run. If you're not selling mm. your product or service, you're not making revenue. You can't employ anyone, you know, so it's really important. 
we there is a, a comment one way or first boss that says sales fixes everything mm. doesn't matter how bad the week's going or what's going wrong in the business if your the sales start to rise all of a sudden people start to smile mm-hmm. right and it's true. Well, it's a feeling of success, right? It is. Mm-hmm. It's the first rank. It's it's you know, it is it's it is the first uh, benchmark of success in all businesses. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I know we're coming to the end of the time that we have yep. together. This has been so great. I know you probably have lots more expertise <laughs> on this topic to share. Um, so I wanted to ask if you just have anything you want to offer to the listeners. Look. Uh, I, I came on here, I'm like you, I like to help people. Mm-hmm. I like to, you know, just to get people to improve their business, to be better at what they do. I do do what we call, I mentioned it before, the Fast Five, mm-hmm. Fast Five Review, which I do do over uh, Zoom for people all around the world. And uh, we peel the Band-Aid off, as they say. Mm. Uh, we go through some pretty good questions. It takes probably a couple of hours. I can give, I give them a bit of homework before. And it, and it only is as good as they want to be. They've got to be honest mm-hmm. with me. Right. And as a coach, I'm not here to advise. I'm not here to uh, tell them what to do. We're here mm-hmm. to work together and bring out their best. I mean, LeBron James and all these guys all have coaches. Right. These coaches can't play basketball as good as them, but they can't be as good as they are without a coach. Mm-hmm. And so I have no problem if people want to go through the Fast Five with me. They can contact me through uh, robelliot.com.au. And uh, I'll have a lot of fun with them. They'll uh, we'll do it in a way that it'll help them enormously. And then they can come back to you as a bookkeeper and say, oh, mm-hmm. oh Rob's helped me with this. I need to improve this. What do I do? So nice. I've got no problem in doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we normally charge in Australia $300 for a couple of hours for that. It's in Australian dollars, so I don't know what that'll be in American. But uh for your guys only this morning, we can do that for 150 Australian, which I'll have to work out okay, later. We'll figure, it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. It changes and, uh, on a daily it, look, basis, right? <laughs> it is. It, it, it's everything Everything for someone from a small business to a, a solo printer, someone who's yeah. just starting out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really here to help. That's my goal. I just want to put smiles on people's faces. I want them to be successful. I want them to be, just achieve whatever they want to achieve. And uh, as I say, when I've done public speaking, and I go, I've sat in the audience and seen someone I spent four weeks with, you know, one night, one week, a, one night a week, and they walk out on stage and they do a keynote and they nail it. Mm-hmm. It's worth more than anything you ever get paid. Right. <laughs> and someone comes back to me and says, my business is rocketing or we've improved, you know, and they've got a huge smile on their face. You know, that's, that's, that's what we, you and I are here for. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's so satisfying to see that when you see your customers being successful. I love it. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. You know, because then they rock it. I love to see them just going through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it just makes your day worthwhile. Right. Mm-hmm. So I know you just shared a link for your website, but is there any yeah. other way you want to share for someone to reach out to you and connect? Look, uh, there's, I've got my own podcast, as we call it, The Real Journeys of Success. It's just like you on YouTube and all the normal uh, podcasting. And that's where I interview people from around the world who are just normal people who have been and made a success of their lives. It's raw. It's uncut. It's, it's, it's straight. And they, some of these people, I'll tell you what, they're amazing, Candy. Uh, I've got everyone from a guy who's the front man to a, a band in Australia ultra marathon runners, a private investigator from LA. Hmm. Uh, I've got people in Monaco. And these are just normal people that back themselves. And they're great interviews. They go for about 30 minutes, mm-hmm. uh, 30, 40 minutes. And you can listen to it in the car or watch it on YouTube. Uh, and I love people watching them. You know, So just the real Journeys of Success podcast with Rob Elliott. Through my website, as we said, robelliot.com.au. And uh, you can, Rob Elliott, sales and business coach on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn, notorious or famous, whichever way you want to point it, you can find me. <laughs> and look, I, I'm, known, I'm not all about the money. I'm like you. <laughs> if someone has a simple question about sales that they're stuck on, just drop me a line. I'll give you an answer. I'll help you out. It's not a problem. Or I'll point you in the right direction. I'm pretty relaxed that way. Perfect. 
That's great. I thank you so much, Robert, for sharing your expertise on my show today. I really appreciate your taking the time to chat with me. Oh, it's been awesome. I love talking to uh, people, as we say in Australia, if you want to, for, you never put an accountant in charge of a business. Yeah, and salespeople and accountants are the opposite to each other because we hate paperwork and admin and you guys thrive on it. So I think it's awesome to be able to talk to someone from the other side of the desk. I I really enjoyed it this morning, Candy. Thank you. I I do appreciate your time. And I do want to thank the listener also for tuning in today. I hope you found this topic interesting and that it answered some of your questions about the sales chain. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to Robert at any of the links that he shared, or you can send us a message at media at abandp.com. And would you please share our show with those you know? I'd really appreciate your support. I hope you can join us for next week's topic, Smart Marketing Tips for Businesses on a Budget. And please remember you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. You can find the podcast posted on multiple favorite podcast platforms, including Google, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next Tuesday. Have a terrific week.